we can teach creativity. People can be more creative than they currently are. And through a means of inquiry, where they are active participants rather than passive passengers, then in fact they really uh, develop that skill set to, to think, to analyze. Inquiry-based learning techniques have proven to be highly effective in nurturing and developing creativity and critical thinking in students. Inquiry-based learning requires students to draw on and develop their own abilities to solve problems and discover answers for themselves rather than relying on teachers to supply the facts. We have the standard top-down role, right? The professor is the brilliant person in the front of the class who dictates and the students quickly, you know, write their notes and try to, try to plumb the depth of the, uh, depths of the brilliant professor, right? And this turns that all on its head. IBL teachers facilitate the learning process rather than disseminate information in a traditional lecture setting. What it's not all about is somebody standing in front of the classroom explaining mathematics. What it is all about is someone saying a very few words to get you started thinking on your own. The teacher's job in an inquiry-based learning environment is therefore not to deliver facts but instead to help students along the process of discovering knowledge for themselves. The student is on a discovery path. In fact, we like to use that sometimes and call it a discovery method. But emphasis on traditional lecture styles of teaching in America has had disappointing results. In a recent international study comparing teenagers' performance on a standardized mathematics exam, 15-year-olds in the U.S. ranked only 24th out of 30 of the world's most affluent countries. It's not really that lecture prohibits construction of ideas. A lecture may reach a handful who might be at just the right moment to hear what it is that's being said. If we don't lecture and we do something else, that something else should be designed so that as many people as possible in the room can be engaged and get something out of that experience. The thing is, lecture usually just doesn't do that. But there is a growing community of educators, teachers that are making dramatic changes in their classrooms and in the lives of their students. Does somebody have proof of that? Okay, Tracy? I see students every single semester come up to me and say, this was the most important class I've taken in college. They said it this semester. Teachers who make use of inquiry-based learning have found that their students are more likely to remember concepts that they discover on their own rather than memorize information that is recited to students in traditional lecture settings. I had a student who had some ideas about a particular problem we were discussing as a group and I failed to just totally give this student the floor and after class he came up to me and shared, you know, more of the details of what he was thinking and I just could have shot myself because I thought, you know, how many times is it going to take for me to learn that I really need to shut up and let the students completely have the floor because so many times they have a much more interesting way of looking at things than I do. At the end of every semester they come up and say to me, wow, you know, I never really thought I could do this stuff before, but this has really changed my mind about math. And, you know, I think maybe I can do it now. But they love it. They think this is just the neatest thing in the world. You know, I had, I had one young lady came, come up to me and she says, you know, before I took this course, I was so scared because I'd never been good at math before. You know, but I have to tell you, I've gotten so much out of this. I, I'm a much better writer now. And I read things more carefully now. IBL teachers create carefully structured situations that allow students to solve problems independently by designing ways to prove their own ideas and by relying on their own abilities to find mathematical and scientific truths for themselves. I'm doing it on my own. That means this knowledge doesn't just come from the sky through the professor and he's the only source of that knowledge. No, I can get to it by myself. And the professor can be a mentor kind of like a connection, but not the primarily source. That makes me feel good. That makes me more comfortable with my decision that I can teach math. I can do math. Not just there's a certain group of people who can. Anybody can. So to them, it's like they're pushing forward the, you know, the frontiers of, of truth or something. They really feel like they've got some stake in human knowledge now. Uh, that they wouldn't have had if we had just lectured to them. 
But inquiry-based learning is not a new and trendy educational fad. This educational movement continues a long and time-tested legacy of teaching that was pioneered by a mathematics professor in Texas named Robert L. Moore. R. L. Moore was the founder of a branch of mathematics, point set topology, which in itself would give him a place in history. He's become even better known as a teacher of mathematicians. They developed a way of teaching which he was able to bring students up to a kind of research level in mathematics almost without them being aware of it. Beginning in 1911, as a professor of mathematics at the University of Pennsylvania, Moore began to experiment with his classroom teaching style. It was at Pennsylvania that Moore first adopted the basic principles of his radically new instructional method that he would fully implement at his next appointment, the University of Texas at Austin, where he would remain for the next 49 years. Inspired by his success, other teachers in the mathematics department at Texas, especially H.J. Ettlinger and H.S. Wall, developed their own versions of Moore's teaching method, which also became known as the Texas method. Moore and his colleagues, through successive generations of students of students, would eventually lead to nearly 3,000 PhDs, many of whom were profoundly influenced by this IBL technique. It resulted in probably the most distinguished group of PhD students that any professor has ever had to their credit, not just in the United States, but perhaps in the history of mathematics. They would eventually change the very face of mathematics. Three of Moore's PhD students would become presidents of the American Mathematical Society. Five would become presidents of the Mathematical Association of America. Three of his students were members of the National Academy of Sciences, as he himself was, and that too is a record that, as far as I know, hasn't been matched. So by these various criteria, R. L. Moore has always had a rather towering position in the history of American mathematics. But in terms of trying to prove the success of a method of teaching, the ultimate measure is the success of the students.